Good morning, everybody. My name is Thomas Behrens, and I welcome you all on behalf of the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung in Poland. Today, we will focus on the 3C Initiative, a multinational alliance established in 2016. We will focus and discuss its general conception, as well as national perspectives from different European countries. But why do we want to discuss this today? It's because innovation, security and participation in Europe are key areas in the work of Konrad Adenauer Stiftung. We are convinced that progressive innovations, such as implemented within the framework of the 3C initiative, are indispensable. Our security cannot be taken for granted either. And we will only be able to address the current challenges in Europe if we discuss them together with our partners and friends in all over the European Union. We want to assure, of our, assure us ourselves of our positions in order to participate in our common project for peace and security, freedom and justice. For our debate today, we have found excellent experts from all over Europe, from Croatia, from Bulgaria, from Lithuania, and last but not least, from Poland. So the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung would like to thank you all very much for your open willingness to join us today. Here in the studio on my right side is Mr. Piotr Buras. Mr. Buras is a journalist, author and expert in German and European politics. Between 2008 and 2012, he worked as a columnist and Berlin correspondent for Gazeta Wyborcza, the biggest Polish daily newspaper. Today, he is the head of the European Council on Foreign Relations here in Warsaw. And, as I may say so, he is a strong partner and friend of our office here in Poland. Witam, Pan Piotr. Witam, Sezic. In Croatia, we are very pleased to welcome Dr. Mate Granic. He is a Croatian diplomat, former professor of medicine, highly respected politician and political advisor. Dr. Granic was served as Minister of Foreign Affairs from 1993 to 2000 and five years ago he was Special Advisor on Foreign Affairs to then President Kolinda Graba Kitarovic. And today he is Special Advisor to the Prime Minister of the Republic of Croatia. Hello to Zagreb. In Bulgaria we welcome Dr. Jordan Bozilov. He is a security and defense analyst. His career includes more than 20 years of professional experience in the Bulgarian Ministry of Defense and five years as a researcher in the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences. Currently, he is president of the Sofia Security Forum, an NGO working in the spheres of security defense, international relations and good governance. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello, good morning from Sofia. Hello. And last but not least, in Latvia, we are happy to welcome Mr. Otto Tabuns. He is the founding director of the Baltic Security Foundation, a lecturer at the Riga Graduate School of Law, and since 2017, executive director of the Baltic Security Strategy Project. Before he, saved as a, he, he served as a senior expert at the Ministry of Defense of the Republic of Latvia. So welcome you all. Greetings to Riga. And dear gentlemen, let us proceed as follows. First, we want to look back at the founding years of the Three Season Initiative. Then in a second step, we will focus on current issues and projects. And finally, we will look at the international context. But first, let me make some few remarks to introduce the topic to you. 
The 3C initiative, shortly known as 3SI, is a cooperation framework formally established five years ago, which includes 12 countries from East Central and South Eastern Europe. These are Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, Hungary, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, Romania and Bulgaria. So these countries between the Baltic Sea, the Adriatic Sea and the Black Sea are all members of the European Union. The association aims to promote the connectivity and economic development of the region. Above all, by advancing cross-border infrastructure projects in a north-south direction. In particular, this is intended to fill historically grown gaps in connectivity, as many important infrastructure corridors are in, or th in, three, in or through the region are running from east to west. So the focus of the cooperation is on the area of transport, energy and digital. These are the projects we are going to discuss today. And according to the International Monetary Fund, the region has a need for infrastructure investment of about 1.3 trillion US dollars in the current decade. In addition to the annual summit meetings, there's a business forum, an investment fund and projects assigned to areas of priority. The driving force behind the platform, I think, is Poland or rather the Law and Justice Party, PiS, which is now in power since 2015, and the Polish President Andrzej Duda. Poland launched the initiative together with Croatia at the first formal summit in Dubrovnik in August 2016. And the group of countries represents about a quarter of the European Union's population but only 13% of its value added. So this as a short introduction to the topic. And now I will, would go on to the first section. And please let's take a look back the historical and political retrospective of the general initiative. So let's turn to Croatia, to Zagreb, to Dr. Mate Granic. Maybe Dr. Granic, could you please remember what was happening five years ago at the summit in Dubrovnik? And please give us some insights about the uh, situation in Croatia then. Thank you. Thank you for kindly invitation to be here today. And best regards from Zagreb. The initiative started in New York on the corner of the new meeting of UN. 19, uh, 2015, and the initial first meeting was in Dubrovnik, and during this meeting, the members of this platform, this initiative, uh, adopted Dubrovnik Declaration. Uh, that's the plan what to do and what's the aims. The initiative is uh, economic cooperation, especially on the field of energy transport communication between 12 European Union's Central and Eastern European Union's country. That's the basis. What's our aim? Strengthening economy of every country and all together and our position in the European Union. Uh, that was first aim of the initiative because our aim is cohesion of European Union. Uh, there are differences definitely between uh, economic situation in the country's economic growth. Our aims is cooperation between all this country and strengthening our position in the European Union. 
that was uh, the situation what we discuss uh, in Dubrovnik. After that, next meeting was in Warsaw. President Trump was there. After that, uh, Crest and Diana Tallinn. And but the basic games are on the first place economic gains. Naturally, Croatia and many of these countries are members of the NATO uh, concerning all strategic, uh, geostrategic issues. Croatia is member of European and NATO. Naturally, we are very active on this field, but concerning the initiative, first aim is economic. Thank you. Could you explain us who were the driving forces to plan the initiative and what was the discussion between Croatia and Poland? Uh, Croatia and Poland discuss President Ansi Duda and Madam President, former uh, President of Croatia, Kulinda Gavar-Kitarovic, uh, about the aims of the initiative model of cooperation and uh, how to invite all these countries that they accept the initiative. Uh, that was what they discussed and, uh, during the first meeting and first preliminary meeting, preliminary meeting in UN. And today, both countries are very active in the initiative. Uh, I'm sure that it will be in the future too. And did you get some immediate reaction by other states, like Russia or by United States? What was the reaction to the project? It was a very ambitious project indeed, yes? The states supported the initiative. And I'm sure that we have a support and the United States are a country, part of country. The same situation is with, uh, with Germany. Concerning the Russia, they didn't tell any time that they are against. Uh, but at this moment, we are concentrated on economic operation. Economic operation, uh, I'm sure that they carefully follow the situation they initiate but they didn't tell anything against the initiative because this initiative uh, strengthening economic uh, in European Union because uh, uh, the platform consists of 12 European Union countries. I understand. Maybe let's move to Poland and ask Piotr Buras what was the idea behind the Polish politics and maybe you could explain some historical elements. Yes, thank you. You know, I, I think uh, you know the uh, the main drivers um, of the Polish interest in the three seas initiatives were not much different from those in in Croatia, because in fact um, I would I would say that there are three at least three um, key elements which uh, which need to be discussed in this context. The first is what Mr. Granic already mentioned is the the question of. Uh, the uh, energy uh, and especially transport infrastructure at the uh, north-south axis uh, in the European Union, because uh, um, and and the and the need for for further investments and and um, further expansion of this infrastructure, which is absolutely key for the further develop economic development of the um, of the region, um, and I think. Uh, it is perhaps in, in Western Europe not always very well known that the, this infrastructure which we inherited from the communist time is, uh, is first of all much weaker than in Western Europe. For example, the interconnections, energy interconnections, transport, uh, roads, uh, rail, railways and so on and so forth is still much uh, um, the, the, this this network is not as dense as, as it should be, uh, and it's not sufficient 
um, uh, when it comes to the further economic development in the region. And what is uh, perhaps not less important is the fact that, that the, this, this infrastructural main axis in the region is west east mm -hmm. and this is the inheritance from from the also from from the communist time from the fact that we all were somewhat dependent on the on this of course of the soviet union trade and economic relations with the soviet union and and uh, the, the major investments were made on this axis uh, and and you, if you look at the map of, mm -hmm. of infrastructural connections you, you see that this connectivity east west is, is quite strong north south is very very weak so so I think this is really the, the main driver um, in the mm, and the awareness that that we needed is uh, uh, probably quite widespread in the region. But but I think it would probably the three, three C's uh, initiative would have never come uh, to to, um, to to existence uh, if uh, there was no quite a pessimistic view in the region when it comes to the possible. Um, uh, funding from the European Union in the future for infrastructure projects because we need to to remember that uh, m uh, this region the, these are of course no, no longer new member states of European Union but still the countries uh, which which uh, joined the European Union in 2004 or, or, or later um, they they are heavily dependent uh, on the on the funding from the EU when it comes to the uh, development of the of the key um, um, infrastructure and uh, connectivity projects, and this funding has been extremely important uh, so far, and it will remain very important. But it will certainly not dry out, but it will be uh, smaller already in this current uh, financial uh, perspective which which uh, we have just started yeah, and and we cannot expect that the European Union would um, would fund those projects uh, so without any time limits mm -hmm. so the so the idea behind this three C's initiative is basically to look for for new sources of investment and new new sources um, of money for uh, for for um, uh, for this key infrastructural projects. So I think this is this is one one important component. Mm -hmm. But the second important component, I think, from the from the Polish uh, perspective, which cannot be fully um, uh, forgotten in the when we discuss about the origins of the uh, of the Three Cs initiative. Is, a, is, is also a certain political thinking behind it. And Poland, the, the Polish uh, um, uh, government of law and justice and, um, and um, also the President Andrzej Duda uh, stands uh, or stood at the beginning of, uh, of their term, 2015, 2016, um, for a certain reshuffle of Polish uh, foreign policy priorities. And one of uh, one of ideas which was floated was uh, was an idea of creating sort of a counterweight in in the European Union, a regional framework, being also a political counterweight to the dominance of the Franco-German tandem in the EU. And and I think I'm I'm not sure uh, uh, to what extent this idea was shared in other countries, probably or certainly not to uh, to a very large extent. But at least in Poland, it played a certain um, a certain role. Uh, the idea that Poland could could become a leader of a uh, of a regional grouping uh, um, uh, of countries sharing some um, economic and political interests, also some cultural approaches, also uh, you know Croatia and Poland um, share, or at least the, the parties uh, which were in the government back then uh, shared some uh, you know conservative values and and, um, and and the idea was to 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 build a, 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 a sort of a, a, a new grouping within the European Union which would um, rebalance this West European dominance. And, um, and, I, and, and this idea, at least in the Polish foreign policy thing, and this is, I think, what you alluded to mm -hmm. in your question, 
it draws uh, upon um, some ideas which uh, were tested um, also in the 20s uh, of the on the 20s century um, there was an idea of uh, which was called intermarium a, 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 exactly a sort of a maybe not a federation but a alliance of of uh, of countries of uh, central eastern uh, and south eastern europe from the uh, from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea, uh, which reminds us of, of this regional framework of the Three Seas Initiative. But but back then in the twenties, that was a response to to a geopolitical challenge Poland was facing and the region was facing, being placed between two hostile. Um, 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 powers, Germany and, and Russia, so that was a completely different geopolitical setting. But still, I think this uh, this this idea the the, the still is, is, was was quite still alive um, and and sort of uh, nourished this this thinking about the Three Seas Initiative and its geopolitical in its geopolitical dimension. And, and lastly, I think what is what 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 cannot be ignored in this in this uh, at least from the Polish perspective in the context of the Three Seas Initiative is also the hope uh, of uh, to to anchor uh, the American interests mm -hmm. more strongly in 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 our region and in the um, and, and to to make the United Maybe States um, uh, a, a engaged partner uh, not only the security area um, and I, here NATO is the key um, of course the key framework but also economically and when it comes to investment funding and so on and uh, and, and build an, a regional alliance with the with the with the United States when it comes to these uh, uh, infrastructural projects uh, and uh, sort of trying to perhaps supplement uh, American investments for a potential loss or a rel relative loss of the European investments in the region. So I think uh, this is, so, so uh, from, from the Polish perspective, as you may have noticed from what I've just said, it is both a, a strong uh, economic interest in the development of the infrastructural uh, connectivity project in the region, but also there is a, a portion of, of strategic political thinking behind it, uh, which goes sort of be, be beyond this uh, this economic reasoning. But of course, we, we can discuss to what extent yeah. this is still uh, there and to what extent these hopes have been fulfilled or can be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this very nice explanation of the background. Uh, I would like to go to Sofia now and ask you, uh, Mr. Bozilov, um, what are the considerations that led Bulgaria to join the initiative? And do you understand this thought of Piotr Buras? Maybe there is some uh, lacking of understanding in the West, which uh, occurs because it's more or less the, the Western and East uh, transfer and not the North and South route, which is very dominant now. Please, what is the consideration of Bulgaria? What was it? What was the situation in Bulgaria and Sofia five years ago? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you, moderator, for giving me this chance to share some thoughts on uh, Bulgarian uh, perspective towards uh, Three Cs initiative. Uh, I have to start by saying that uh, from the very beginning, Bulgaria supports the initiative as a platform for accelerated economic development uh, and enhanced intra-regional, but also cross-border cooperation and connectivity between uh, participating states. Um, we see from SOFIA uh, this continuing division, mainly an economic and technological division, uh, between East and West and between North and South to be one of the most serious uh, challenges uh, which EU is facing. And overcoming existing infrastructural disparities and shortcomings will contribute to the integration, business contacts, uh, and economic growth uh, of our region uh, as a whole. And the 3C uh, initiative is seen as an, uh, exactly the opportunity to attract more foreign investment um, and uh, private capital 
and by this to complement the EU cohesion infrastructure and in instruments. So the three C's initiative is a way to overcome the differences within the EU and uh, is a tool for social and economic cohesion through transport, uh, economic, social connectivity. Uh, this is how Bulgaria sees the main goal uh, of the initiative from the very beginning. And uh, another priority of Bulgaria uh, are Western Balkans. And the uh, uh, accelerated development uh, of, of Black Sea region, uh, development of infrastructure of Black Sea region, in our view and in view of Bulgarian politicians, uh, will contribute to the process of stabilization uh, and development of the countries uh, of the Western Balkans uh, and subsequently their integration into, into the European Union. I think this is the main starting point for Bulgaria uh, uh, regarding uh, participation in the initiatives. Uh, and if you allow me, uh, the moderator, I, I'll add some uh, Bulgarian peculiarities, if you wish, because there were uh, debates uh, and uh, I'll say some concerns regarding the initiative. Of course. Uh, thank you. Uh, apart from, from general support of the initiative, uh, as I mentioned, uh, from the very beginning, uh, there were some nuances um, uh, and, uh, as I said, some uh, concerns. Uh, in Bulgaria, initially, there were debates about uh, 3SI uh, and its main goals and orientation. And the debate were, debates were about its links to Russia. Um, Unfortunately, Bulgaria uh, has a very serious dependence um, on, on Russia, mainly in the, uh, uh, in the uh, energy sector. Uh, we are almost 100% dependent on Russian uh, gas uh, and, and, and oil. Uh, in addition, Bulgarian uh, population, for historical reasons, uh, is, is very positive about Russia. And in this sense, um, uh, there, there, there was, and I still, there is a desire from most of uh, political parties in Bulgaria not to see the 3C initiative um, as um, antagonistic to Russia and not to draw parallels um, with the idea, uh, as, as the previous speaker uh, uh, mentioned, uh, to, to draw parallels uh, with 3Cs uh, and the old concept of intermarium. So this was, um, uh, I would say, the first concern. Another concern um, expressed by some politicians in Bulgaria uh, was that the initiative shall not lead to a further division between the old Europe uh, and new, new Europe. And Bulgaria is a very strong proponent of more active participation of Germany, for example, uh, in the initiative uh, uh, in general and uh, different projects. And I think uh, this approach defines the Bulgarian position towards the Three Cs initiative uh, as an initiative in the economic, social connectivity of the countries from the region, uh, as well as a platform for uh, cooperation uh, within the EU and between the EU and the United States, and of course, opportunity uh, to attract uh, other partner countries to participate in the regional economic development. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good explanations. And I would like to turn to Otto Tabuns. Uh, maybe you take it into the consideration, the view and the perspective towards Russia. And what do you think? Do you think there's a, there's a unique or a whole perspective seen from all the Baltic states? Or are there slightly differences between these nations? Uh, thank you. Uh, indeed, uh, there are several uh, issues that are shared by all three Baltic states and it is uh, connected to both uh, economic and security reasons. Uh, if we talk about uh, economy and infrastructure, then uh, I may share the sentiment uh, and the fact stated by uh, my colleagues uh, that uh, the uh, north-south axis is indeed uh, very weakly developed for historical reasons. And the Baltic states are probably one of the best examples of this, as we uh, saw the infrastructure that was uh, developed during the Soviet occupation as one that primarily served the interests of uh, Russia. Uh, well, uh, currently, uh, this historical legacy um, is a problem uh, for our uh, completer uh, integration 
uh, in the European Union and also in the uh, Western uh, economic uh, sphere. Uh, for example, uh, the, the, the best example must be the field of energy, uh, where similarly as with uh, Bulgaria, we are highly dependent on uh, natural gas imports. Um, it is also the matter of uh, energy transit if we talk about electricity. Um, now we are still uh, within the same um, energy arrangement uh, with uh, Russia and Belarus, uh, although since 2018 we are on the way uh, to connect with the uh, continental uh, European uh, power grid. Um, but that is also, of course, the impact of the um, uh, recent geopolitical developments and how we uh, should take that uh, into account. Uh, that is both, uh, of course, the Russian aggression in Ukraine and uh, the, the possible effects on uh, continuous politicization of energy networks. Uh, that is also uh, the situation uh, with uh, China and uh, the potential promises uh, or the potential expectations uh, that were there after 2014. And as we know, the Belt and Road Initiative, which was initiated in 2013, uh, included quite a few of these promises also for our region. Um, we have seen that uh, not all of the stakeholders in our part of Europe have been uh, happy about the results and are looking differently at it now. Uh, and it is also uh, connected uh, both in terms of Russia and China, uh, the question of Belarus, because uh, it is uh, both uh, the fact uh, with the situation, what is happening there right now, as well as uh, the uh, interconnections uh, that are important for, for example, Latvia and Lithuania, if we talk about transit, uh, but also uh, this uh, potential uh, cooperation with China, remembering that uh, the People's Republic invested uh, millions in logistical center in uh, Belarus, uh, which uh, was intended to serve as the springboard for further transit cooperation with Lithuania and Latvia. And um, as we can see from the development of the situation in the region, um, that is uh, highly unlikely to develop in a constructive direction. Uh, I think it is also a shared concern with regard to the EU and the future of the EU funds, as it was also uh, mentioned uh, by um, uh, my colleagues on the panel, uh, because we can see in the Baltic states that uh, several uh, industries and several sectors of the economy uh, are um, under threat of becoming structurally dependent on the European funding that is received. For example, the field of construction, which uh, at uh, a certain point of time uh, is, uh, you know, just like uh, looking very carefully of uh, what the, the next European budget is going to be and uh, uh, um, how that uh, will affect not only the industry, but also the general growth of uh, economy. Uh, so certainly there is uh, much of encouragement in uh, seeing uh, the Three Cs initiative as a um, uh, possible diversification of uh, economic uh, growth. Uh, and also it is the matter of uh, investment, of secure investment, especially um, uh, that kind of investment that would uh, make more sense uh, with regard to our security priorities. Thank you very much. We see after the first round, we have a lot of expertise now in this group. All the panelists are great. Thank you for your mentioning. Uh, uh, especially the the topic of Belarus is very important to us and so we are very thankful for for having mentioned this at now please uh, let us turn now to the very concrete projects of the CSI um, we have already heard that the economic dimension is very dominant and is uh, the driving force and maybe it's the, the, the most important uh, stone within the initiative. Um, maybe we go into the specifics, if we look at the procedure, uh, over the last five years, you have every year the summit, which brings all the participants together. And um, what would you say, um, maybe let's ask Riga, um, what are the most um, important signals that you have uh, seen or analyzed in the last, at the last summit, which took place in Tallinn in 2020? Um, I think that there are two points that are very important. Uh, one of them is uh, the selection of the priorities. Uh, if we look specifically at the uh, Tallinn summit, then uh, those included uh, energy, uh, transport and uh, digital platforms and services. Um, I think that that is a shared interest of uh, not only 
the Baltic states, but also of uh, other uh, participants of the uh, line uh, with the priorities that are important, uh, for example, at the European level, and also uh, some of the matters that our partners, such as the United States, uh, sees as important uh, so that they would develop even further. Um, the the uh, second point uh, which uh, makes uh, this uh, very pertinent is the matter of uh, funding, so that uh, this just uh, does not stay um, uh, as a, a communique or just on paper. And uh, it is uh, encouraging to see that uh, money uh, had been pledged by the participants, and uh, not only um, uh, public participants, but also private ones, and also that there have already been uh, projects that have been supported and investments that have been made, uh, so that uh, the uh, like-minded nations uh, would be able to support uh, those initiatives that primarily benefit their uh, economic and uh, security uh, interests. Uh, specifically, if we talk about uh, the cases of uh, the Baltic states, uh, these priorities uh, are uh, in line with uh, some of the uh, national uh, perspectives. For example, if we talk about Lithuania, then that is, of course, the matter of energy security and the liquid natural gas import and transit, knowing that Lithuania was first of the Baltic states that established a liquid natural gas uh, terminal. And we know that uh, one of the indicated priorities is to establish uh, this uh, natural gas infrastructure and also liquid natural gas infrastructure that would allow uh, this uh, energy transit uh, in north-south uh, axis. And here, of course, Lithuania would have a competitive advantage uh, with that regard. Uh, if we talk about Latvia, then um, the uh, sector of uh, transit is very important. Uh, we can already see the potential benefits that are expected from the Rail Baltic project uh, and the central role that Riga will have uh, in it. Uh, but uh, it is also uh, important for a wider uh, regional scale. Um, uh, another aspect where um, this initiative is very important for projects like this is uh, the matter of uh, green policies and um, the uh, different standards that the uh, European Union member states uh, will have to follow currently and also under the uh, new ambitions uh, that have been accepted on the European level. We have seen that for Latvia, um, it has been uh, an issue uh, with regard to uh, several criteria, and we have seen government being proactive, for example, with regard to the modes of transportation and the uh, prioritization of uh, rail transport, but perhaps also uh, this uh, integration of uh, the transit networks and additional spending there would also uh, help the uh, member states uh, collectively uh, achieve uh, those goals that are important individually. Uh, if we talk about uh, Estonia, then of course uh, we can outline the uh, digital services and digital platforms uh, because uh, there, of course, uh, it would be a competitive advantage for Estonia uh, to um, be both uh, the, the country that uh, sets the agenda or perhaps priority as uh, what should be the investments there, but also be the country that provides uh, contributions in terms of uh, content. Thank you very much. It's very nice to hear these compromise topics. Um, we see the vari variety if you look from, from country to country. Uh, and I would like to stick with the funding. Please, uh, let's turn to Poland and ask what is the Polish perspective on this funding today? Because we have seen that Polish showed a very strong financial commitment by the Polish de uh, development banks. So it's in Polish it's Bank Gospodarska Krajowego. And how would you say it's interpreted? It's interpreted? Yeah, I think it, it shows the fact that the Polish Development Bank um, is so strongly engaged in, in the Three Seas Initiative. It shows that uh, the very strong backing from the state, because this is a state-owned bank. And uh, in fact, the Polish contribution to the newly established uh, Three Seas um, Investment Fund fund um, is is by far the strongest in the uh, among all uh, members of the initiative so so in fact in, in the in, when it comes to the financial side polish it, poland is is the leader of it but but of course i i i must say that uh, i would pour a little bit water into the wine when it comes to these uh, to to the um, uh, to, to the initiative because without you know uh, 
uh, being too critical, but but I think, or, or too uh, pessimistic. But but I think the, the real the, this financial side is a good example because we have at the moment uh, um, an idea of investment funds uh, which which is envisaged to. Uh, provide 5 uh, billion euro uh, for investments in the in the region and this is but on a commercial basis so this is not a uh, it, it won't be grants like the, the EU grants uh, provided uh, for for whatever projects also carried out uh, in the region um, under the supervision of the European Union but it, there will be just uh, on a commercial basis uh, loans for investments. Uh, five billion euro is really not much. And at the moment, we I think we have um, pledges of one one billion euro. Uh, and uh, when it comes to the to the investment needs in the region, according to some research uh, made by my Polish think tank Spot Data. Uh, we need, of course, there are various scenarios, but but we probably need um, uh, to to um, to make a um, qualitative leap forward when it comes to the uh, um, uh, infrastructure in the region. We need about um, uh, 600 billion uh, euro, uh, which so 500 billion, even if it is leverages on the financial markets like the Juncker Fund. Uh, was um, uh, 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 was made. Uh, I think it can provide maybe 50 billion um, um, investments, which is which is uh, which is quite a lot. Mm. But still, it is uh, when it comes uh, when you compare it with the funding um, which has been already provided for the uh, for the for the projects from the European Union. It is actually much less than um, than that, and and still, if you look at the list, we have a, I think at the moment almost eighty priority projects uh, um, designed by by the member states of the initiative. If you look at them, among them are all um, uh, listed as as three C's initiative projects. Are also uh, projects which have actually nothing to do with with the initiative or which were created before this initiative. Uh, was was established like the Polish Baltic pipe uh, providing uh, gas from uh, from from the north from Norway then uh, over Denmark uh, and which is a very important project uh, and generating also further investments uh, when it comes to the infrastructure but it's actually uh, a project which uh, which is now under the umbrella of the three seas initiative but but uh, have been financed and and have been uh, carried out without this this umbrella Mm -hmm. And the same is true for for a number of other ideas like Via Via Carpathia and other uh, important transport uh, project uh, from from the Baltic uh, states uh, to to Romania, a, a very important road uh, investment. Uh, it's also uh, the idea was was born before the Three Seas Initiative was launched, and uh, and which is. Uh, Mm, and, and still the funding for, for this project and for actually the, the vast majority of, of projects envisaged of already being carried out by, by the Three Seas Initiative comes from the EU. I mm. mean, it's from the Connecting Huron facility or from, mm, from the cohesion funds and from the others. So I think at the moment it's, it's very difficult to say mm, what is the mm, actual uh, mm, advantage mm -hmm. of having the umbrella of the Three Seas Initiative, it, mm -hmm. I, I think it has not yet really materialized in form of of, uh, of what actually constitutes or should constitute the, the essence of this mm -hmm. initiative, mm, uh, which are the, the new sources of investment. I, I think the, the problem is still, you know, this is the, the, the main reason for the Three Seas Initiative. Um, the main problem which, which contributed to, its, uh, to the launching of this project, the problem which has still not been overcome by this initiative, this is a lack of investments. Because the, the, the member states of the, uh, of the Three Seas Initiative do not have enough national funds to, uh, and are not really willing to, uh, to provide them uh, for, for the project. Uh, we have the EU which is still providing the, the vast majority of the funds. 
And we have uh, hopes that, for example, the United States will invest more, but, but the United States contributed th 300 million dollar, uh, euro to the, to the Three Seas Investment Fund, which is really uh, not a very meaningful uh, contribution uh, financially. So, so this is still a matter of hopes rather than of reality that, mm -hmm. that this investment um, uh, drive will, will come to fruition. So, but maybe, maybe I'm too pessimistic. Maybe <laughs> my, my colleagues from other uh, countries will, will, uh, will have a different, different perspective on that. Let's ask Mr. Bozilov in Sofia. Um, if you listen to this, is a rather skeptical and not negative or skeptical or realistic perspective. Um, what do you think in regard that the next summit takes place in Sofia? And are there any special goals promoted by the Bulgarian government to, to push the initiative? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, Bulgaria is uh, preparing uh, to host uh, the next meeting of the heads of states uh, of the countries participating in, uh, in, in the initiative. Um, and also uh, there is a business forum uh, which will bring together companies and stakeholders uh, from the region uh, and strategic uh, foreign investors uh, because the role of this business forum is considered uh, to be a kind of a promoter of the initiative um, uh, and a, uh, as a tool of bringing fresh investments to, 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 to this part uh, of Europe, uh, as uh, the previous uh, speakers uh, already mentioned. Um, uh, Bulgarian president, uh, who will host the meeting, uh, made, uh, I would say, very favorable and more optimistic statement about uh, the future of, uh, uh, of the initiative yesterday at the conference. Um, he called uh, for more effective use of uh, instruments that promote investment and uh, economic growth. Um, uh, I, I think that in the uh, next uh, couple of minutes uh, I'll uh, share with you some of the priorities of the Bulgarian chairmanship of the initiative and I'll stop uh, very briefly on, on uh, uh, some, some, some project which Bulgaria proposed because it's a good example to think about uh, the role of the three, uh, three C's initiative uh, in the investment uh, process in the region. So, uh, first let me, uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, Bulgaria pledged uh, 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 for the investment uh, fund uh, 20 million uh, euro, which is uh, actually uh, almost nothing. Uh, and the issue again is uh, how, to, how to, to get more investments to the region because according to the uh, estimations of the uh, International Monetary Fund, uh, billions uh, of, of euros uh, are needed. So, uh, Bulgarian presidency uh, or chairmanship uh, will intend to facilitate the uh, implementation of projects through uh, complementarity, let me put it in this way, complementarity of fi financing uh, uh, instruments uh, of European Union uh, with the uh, resources from the investment fund. So it is very important how to uh, merge uh, uh, both, uh, both processes. Um, uh, Bulgaria also uh, will propose um, to, to consider uh, a more flexible approach uh, for, for financing and on an uh, ad hoc basis uh, to selected uh, projects, projects uh, with uh, added value to, to, to the whole initiative uh, uh, and money coming from strategic partners and like-minded country outside uh, the, 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 the initiative. So uh, combining all these instruments most probably uh, will, will uh, help your thinking in a more positive uh, way uh, regarding the, the, the financing. Um, what I do believe, the most important issue, uh, will be how to make this project attractive for the donors and how to make them transparent, uh, how to guarantee the openness and transparency. This is a huge challenge to, to all countries. So, uh, among uh, other priorities of, of Bulgaria uh, uh, will be projects uh, under the, uh, the scope of uh, energy security and uh, diversification of routes and sources of supply across the region. Um, and this from Bulgaria is seen as a way to overcome the en energy dependency uh, of the country, mainly from uh, Russia, as I mentioned. Uh, so Bulgaria will strongly support uh, uh, the projects which will diversify 
uh, the supply of uh, gas and oil. Um, many countries uh, in the region uh, face the challenge of uh, young people going to study uh, at universities in Western countries, and then they study uh, uh, there to work. As a result, the region um, uh, uh, and um, the, 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 the intellectual potential of the region uh, is weakening, uh, which results in declining uh, of its competitiveness. So Bulgaria will emphasize of another priority during the chairmanship. Uh, it is development of scientific, educational, uh, and technological potential of the region. And during the summit, uh, it is expected uh, um, uh, that, uh, that another initiative uh, within uh, 3SI will be proposed, namely to uh, create a network of educational, uh, innovative and research organizations uh, in the participating countries, which will uh, stimulate uh, the attraction of investments, development of new technologies uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, and so on uh, and so forth. And, and, and finally, um, from Bulgaria's perspective, uh, the 3SI, uh, North-South uh, Infrastructure Corridor, can be further upgraded. So uh, the corridor uh, would be incomplete, according to Bulgarian view, without connecting it to the Greek uh, agency ports. Uh, and one of the proposals uh, uh, of Bulgaria is to invite Greece also to become a member of the initiative. So I think this, this, this is priorities uh, of the Bulgarian chairmanship. Uh, very briefly about the projects which Bulgaria already proposed. Uh, first uh, uh, proposal, it is uh, to increase the capacity of the underground uh, gas storage uh, in Bulgaria, uh, which is a part of uh, strategic energy infrastructure of Bulgaria, but also of the region. Second project is rehabilitation of uh, Ruse Varna Railway, uh, which connects uh, uh, Black Sea port of Varna with Romania. Uh, and uh, the third uh, project is construction of tunnel under uh, the Balkan mountain, uh, which is part of uh, 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 North-South uh, corridor, and the construction of a highway which will connect uh, to uh, Black Sea cities of Bulgaria, which will facilitate the traffic between Romania and Turkey. But again, all these projects are, uh, uh, have been already proposed for, to different sponsors uh, and uh, to, to be financed by, by different uh, sources. And they are actually mainly uh, within the scope of Bulgarian uh, territory. So one, one uh, issue I think we have to discuss is what are the criteria for approval of, uh, uh, of the project. And the second, uh, we have to decide which are the priority projects to be financed on, on the first wave uh, and after that to continue uh, with the other. So I, I, I think uh, that all these issues will be in the focus uh, of the upcoming uh, summit and hopefully uh, the, the heads of states will find uh, some uh, solutions uh, to the, the issues. Thank you very much for sharing these ideas with us. Um, Dr. Granic in Zagreb, I would like to invite you to comment on this. Um, how do you see the attractiveness of the initiative? Do you think the, the 3SI is on the right track? And what are the priorities for Croatia? The 3C initiative uh, is a presidential initiative but implementation of the initiative is a hand of the government. Government of Croatia strongly support the initiative, national coordinator, uh, minister of foreign and European affairs. Concerning our priorities, first, Croatia paid last year 20 million euro, but Croatia invested in LNG terminal on island Kirk 100 million euro before any money from the European Union or 3C investment fund. And that's first priority for the energy diversification in Croatia. Two other priority pro projects are railway and highway 
from Rijeka, uh, Port of Rijeka, Zagreb and Budapest. And that's some three of these projects are our top priorities. And uh, they are really priorities of many countries in the initiative. And we would strongly insist on this project and we would work naturally with the country in the initiative and European Union too. And there are some in interest, especially for the high, uh, railway from some other country who are not members of the initiative like China. Understand. Um, if we take this and try to get some broader view of the 3SI perspective, maybe let's take in consideration international global players like Piotr Burs already mentioned US. Uh, we have uh, heard from, from Riga about Russia, from Bulgaria about Russia. Um, how do you see the roles of these global players? Please let's go to Riga and um, maybe, maybe Otto Tobuns can us uh, please introduce into his thinking of the US interests in 3SI and maybe explain to us the relations. Uh, I think that we can see um, at least uh, two clear lines of interest. Uh, one of them uh, being uh, the uh, regional security and stability. And that is of course associated with the United States presence. Um, as uh, we have had a bilateral security cooperation very strong for the last 30 years and uh, the security that uh, comes from um, secure uh, infrastructure is also a strong element of it. Uh, another part of uh, the United States interest is also the private interest and specifically uh, um, if we talk about the export of liquid natural gas. Um, in Lithuania there is a clear case when we talk about the liquid natural gas terminal and the American involvement um, uh, with regard to the um, um, uh, exporting of uh, uh, such a uh, gas, uh, which of course has helped uh, Lithuania to break the gas from monopoly. Uh, then, of course, it is also the uh, availability uh, to uh, transit uh, this liquid natural gas not only to Lithuania, but also further away. Uh, if we remember um, as recently as uh, last uh, summer, um, when uh, there was uh, this misunderstanding between uh, Belarus and Russia. Uh, once again, um, uh, this uh, route um, uh, from uh, the port of Klaipada um, over Lithuania uh, served as an alternative way uh, how to get uh, hydrocarbons to Belarus. Uh, that is uh, perhaps uh, not so relevant at this point of uh, what the situation is, but what is still relevant is uh, the, the private interest that applies um, even uh, beyond the uh, Belarus uh, scope. Uh, for example, in uh, Latvia, uh, there has been a um, partially controversial issue of uh, perhaps establishing a separate liquid natural gas terminal, which had been backed by uh, private investors from America. And um, it went down uh, at the end uh, with regard to party politics where uh, seemingly it uh, became a partisan issue and was one of the reasons why it has not gone forward yet, but uh, indeed uh, has been in the planning and uh, almost went uh, to the government um, as a possible uh, uh, alternative uh, solution. Because if we look at the map, uh, the, the proposed um, place for the stupid natural gas terminal was um, by the sea uh, southeast from Riga. And uh, that is uh, not very far from the Inchukans uh, natural gas uh, storage, um, uh, which uh, similarly as uh, with the case of the facilities in Bulgaria, uh, the storage in Latvia serves not only uh, national um, uh, um, consumption, but is also very important for the region and also for Russia itself, because um, uh, Russia stores the uh, natural gas that is necessary for St. Petersburg uh, in the uh, Latvian natural gas storage. And if there would be this connection uh, for uh, the liquid natural gas terminal, then uh, it would also uh, be possible for uh, the Americans uh, and other 
um, importers uh, to serve their natural gas there. Um, also, if we look a little bit further, it has also been interesting to see the interest from other uh, players um, uh, that has previously been uncommon, uh, as far as even Japan, uh, as a Japanese uh, company uh, Marubeni has um, invested in the in the natural gas uh, storage facility in uh, Inchukant in Latvia, buying up to 33% of shares, um, figuring out that uh, the further development of this infrastructure, uh, should it be uh, by independent initiatives or perhaps also uh, in the context of crisis initiatives, could bring uh, additional benefits for uh, private players. So we can see both the geopolitical and also the private uh, interest uh, in this endeavor. Directly relating to this, um, I'm asking Mr. Bajilov in Sofia, maybe you could add something. How is the talk at the security forum in Sofia about this, about the US and Asian influence on the project? We, we see a great potential of the initiative, but this potential will depend uh, how effective uh, will be the initiative, uh, uh, meaning uh, what will be the practical results and uh, what the priorities uh, uh, will be set uh, uh, for, the, for the future. And I, I, I think that uh, if uh, the initiative uh, will be developing um, uh, in, in a way to accelerate the economic development of uh, participants countries to increase connectivity within the region and transatlantic uh, and transregional uh, links, uh, it, it will indeed have a, a great future. Um, uh, I, I do believe that participation of the EU uh, uh, in, in the initiative is crucial uh, and it is very, very important how to synchronize uh, the EU development mechanism, the EU funding mechanisms uh, with the priorities, with the priority projects uh, identified uh, by the by the countries uh, participating in uh, uh, in the three uh, SI, um, again the role of the United States it is also very important. Uh, by the way, United States already announced that uh, they will fund uh, infrastructure, transportation, and energy uh, project in Bulgaria uh, through the three uh, C's uh, initiative, and. Um, um, I, I do believe that it's a very uh, good, uh, uh, good platform uh, for the economic and trade cooperation between the United States uh, uh, and the European Union uh, uh, through implementation of, uh, of, uh, of the project. Uh, and I would say that the initiative will be successful if the United States and the European Union support and both, uh, both work in a coordinated way. Uh, uh, as I mentioned uh, before, Bulgarian perspective is to open project for foreign uh, investors, not only from the United States, but also uh, from uh, United Kingdom, uh, Japan, South Korea, and, and probably some other countries. Uh, and to make project available for financing on ad hoc basis, depending on the interest of, of the investors. Uh, and uh, this shall be very, very, very clear. Uh, and what I also want uh, um, uh, to, to, to say that, uh, you know, it is obvious that there is a clear vision uh, uh, of the need of uh, development of regional cooperation. Uh, and there is a uh, political will for this. Uh, however, the issue is how to transform this political will, uh, this good idea into pra practical projects. Uh, and therefore, uh, I do believe there much, must be a very very um, serious expert uh, uh, work uh, uh, between high-level meetings. So the high-level meetings just go the direction, but there should be very substantial uh, experts work. And in addition, uh, we must work to improve the business climate in each and every country to fight corruption, to improve legislation, to increase uh, labor potential. Ad otherwise, uh, I'm uh, skeptical that uh, we'll have uh, good success uh, in the implementation of, of, of any initiative, not only initiatives under uh, uh, the, the, the 3C uh, initiative. Thank you very much. I strongly agree with this. Um, Piotr Buras, if we focus on the transatlantic relations and the relations between 3SI participants and the European Union, do you see upcoming tensions? Uh, 
Do you think there are some really strong difficulties in the debate? Yeah, I think, you know, first of all, there, there was a tension in the past. Uh, I think that was quite clear and, and this, this tension um, um, was provoked by two factors. The first one, this sort of uh, the Polish um, uh, attempt to use the Three Seas uh, initiative as a vehicle to, to build a counterweight or the re regional uh, geopolitical grouping within the European Union. Um, um, and that created certain tension, uh, especially with Germany and, and uh, but perhaps also with other countries. And the second tension was provoked by the US, because mm -hmm. I think, uh, um, of course, the, th the Three Seas Initiative has never f featured very high on the, on the US uh, foreign policy agenda. Perhaps looking from our region, uh, we, we expect it to be a, a major item, but it has never been. But the fact is that uh, under Donald Trump, um, the, the policy towards Europe uh, was very much uh, focused on betting on the intra-European divisions. Mm -hmm. So whenever, so, so Trump basically intentionally tried to play uh, the Central Eastern European countries uh, out against um, against Germany, first of all. So, so it was in a way playing into his hands that that we had this sort of disagreement within the European Union about the scope and, and the level of ambitions of the Three Seas Initiative. I think it is, of course, uh, clearly it has changed. Uh, Biden uh, pursues a different strategy towards Europe. Uh, we, we see it very well that he... Uh, I, I, I have no illusions about uh, the fact that uh, Europe is not any longer a priority area for the US foreign policy. But what is uh, the, the main change um, is that uh, he's no longer interested in, in the divisions within the European Union. So any attempt to, to make a, uh, um, um, a, a, a sort of Eurosceptic or anti-Brussels or, or whatever um, grouping out of the Three Seas Initiative will n n not be supported by the American administration uh, and of course will not be supported by the majority of the members of the, of the Three Seas Initiative. So I think this, this time is over. Now, a more interesting question is what, is, what is the role of the Three Seas Initiative for the current um, American administration? I mean, it, it, it will not bet on the divisions, but will it uh, embrace this initiative? Will it be uh, supportive? And will it, will it um, uh, devote at least some of its time, very, very, very scarce time, uh, to, uh, to, for, for, for some political investment to this um, um, initiative. I think the, 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 this question is still open there, because Biden is just coming to, to, uh, to Europe. He will spend a week in, in Europe, but he will not meet any of the Central Eastern European leaders. He will not meet with the Three Seas Initiative. Uh, and uh, so, so it, it, it shows that the priorities are, are elsewhere. And I think uh, we, 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 should not, uh, we should not leave... Uh, aside one very important geostrategic element uh, into all that. There are some, uh, if the United States are interested in a uh, strategic cooperation with the whole European Union or with a part of it, like with the Three Seas Initiative, the uh, main uh, target of this cooperation would be China. And, and we know very well that uh, there is, uh, um, 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 I think Otto has already mentioned that, uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, the, the Chinese project, which, is, uh, which pursues basically competing vision. I mean, mm -hmm. this is a Chinese project which aims at a strategic infrastructural connectivity cooperation with the region of the Three Seas Initiative, basically, and, and going beyond that as well, mm -hmm. of course, you know, including the Balkans and so on. And I think strategically for the, for the American administration, it would be interesting to have a stronger cooperation with, the, with our region, but only upon the condition that we basically scrap our hopes and uh, interests to engage more with China. I think this is, there is no way that for the American administration the Three Seas Initiative or the cooperation with the region could be pursued as a priority if a number of uh, the countries of the region are at the same time investing a lot of 
uh, engagement or a lot of time and, and, uh, and, and resources into a similar strategic cooperation with China. And there are some mm -hmm. members of the Three Seas initi Initiative which do that. So I think this is clearly mutually exclusive. And I think, if also seeing from, from Warsaw, it is also interesting that the, the current Polish-American relations have reached its historical low after 1989. Uh, and the, the, there is no mutual trust between the current uh, Biden administration in the US and the Polish, uh, Polish government. That, uh, the, the, the President Duda wanted to raise the issue of the Three Seas Initiative at, at the climate summit organized by, by Joe Biden, but I, as, as far as I know, it, it, this attempt has failed. Uh, and there is no, uh, no real conversation between Washington and Warsaw at the moment. And there are also some very intriguing maneuvers uh, by the Polish, also by the Polish president and, 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 and the government um, with an unexpected visit of, uh, of, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, in, uh, in, in Beijing. Uh, some new sort of, maybe not a rapprochement with Beijing, but, but some new openness um, and some uh, warmer words about the um, comprehensive agreement of, uh, on investments between the EU and China, uh, which, is, which is not really in line with the other priority or the clear priority of engaging more with the Ameri American partners uh, in the Three Seas Initiative. So I'm, I'm wondering how these uh, this, uh, puzzles will, will be sorted out in the upcoming months, uh, because I think there is uh, quite a lot is, is quite, uh, quite in motion and, and it's, it's uh, so I think it's getting very interesting also in view to the, to the upcoming um, Three Seas Initiative Summit and so forth. Mm -hmm. May I add a question uh, towards the Polish politics towards Germany? Um, do you think Poland is strongly interested uh, in going on criticizing German politics or emphasizing differences? I think the Polish, uh, even the Polish coalition, um, ruling coalition, is divided on that issue. I think, and and in general, I think uh, this this Polish-German relations are not in a very good shape. It's actually uh, like the American-Polish relations at the moment are in a bad shape. Uh, and uh, but I think when it comes to the German German is engagement with the Three Seas Initiative, so 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 Poland is also sort of split on that because of course. As, as uh, has been um, said multiple times, uh, it, is, it is key to have the EU and also Berlin on board when it comes to the support for the Three Seas Initiative, because otherwise uh, it's not going to fly. Uh, but at the same time, having, for example, Germany as a full member uh, of the initiative is certainly not what the Polish government would, uh, would, would aim for. Not just because the bilateral tensions between Berlin and Warsaw, but also because of the fact that, that the German is much bigger. I mean, the German economy is much bigger than, than, the, than all the Three Seas Initiative uh, countries taken together. And it would clearly um, dominate the initiative and it, it basically contrad by contradicting also the, the, um, the sort of strategic goals of Poland, but perhaps also um, have too much of influence on, on, on the projects which are supposed to, to strengthen especially relations in the north-south axis and not, uh, um, uh, not in other dimensions. But, but I think it is, uh, we need to also remember that the region, or at least many countries of the region, are very strongly dependent on the economic relations with Germany. And uh, and it will uh, it will not disappear anytime soon. So so of course uh, co this cooperation with Germany in the economic uh, dimension uh, will remain key and and cannot be ignored when it comes also to the to the, to the infrastructure projects carried out under the umbrella of the Three Seas Initiative. Finally, I would like to come back to Zagreb, to Dr. Granic, and ask you again about the position of Germany. Do you think there is a chance to 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 include Germany into the initiative? Do you have these hopes? Germany as a partner of initiative is crucially important for the initiative and especially Croatia too. 
in our modern history, uh, Germany play extremely important role during the recognition of Croatia and after that in the war in Bosnia, especially in the together with United States, how to stop the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, Croatia is strongly economically connected with Germany. Germany has had their own experience with the integration in one part of the country after 1990. For from all these reasons, Germany as a partner of the initiative is a crucial and we very welcome uh, the presence of Germany in the initiative. I think the model uh, Germany as a country partner is a good model at this moment. Oh, thank you very much for this positive perspective. Um, it's very optimistic now to, I want to leave it like that. Uh, thank you to all the panelists. Uh, we had a great debate today because we got all the insights from the expertise in Riga, in Sofia, in Zagreb and here in Warsaw. So really thank you very much that you involved in the project. And I think the debate is not uh, finished yet. We will later on meet again to discuss this topic, maybe if it's 10 years old. And for now, I think I'm, I'm very glad that you, that you have been here. And unfortunately, under these circumstances with COVID-19 pandemic, it's just possible to do it hybrid, but maybe, hopefully we see each other again, present, live, maybe in Warsaw. We would like to invite you anytime. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, is it over?